Whoa, is that the baby? Look at this man just vibing. Why is it white like that? Because there's a woman bathing. Less of a grip of what's going on. Then let me touch the butt. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in my pocket. Uh, Good evening, everybody. Normally I start my videos in the morning, but I have a little surprise for you all. It's nighttime. I just cleaned Pogger's ears. And hey, it's me, Editing Ben. I'm gonna show you guys how I've been training these Cappy Black. First, I sit down with them. Yeah, no, I duh, normal Ben. <laughs> After this, I go ahead and monitor their body language and make sure they're nice and comfortable. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this, but I slowly move my hand just a little bit closer to them inch by inch. You can see this is the first time I've ever been able to do this. If you look closely, his heart rate and breath rate is increased. Once I'm poking him with my knuckle and his heart rate and breath rate slows down, I go ahead and start petting. Then I go ahead and explore with other types of petting where I just kind of scratch his cheeks, his ears. As you can see, normally they don't like it when you touch the back, but he loves it now. He even got comfortable with me holding the camera up to him, but then he stood up, which means, hey, I, I don't care too much for that camera being there, sir. But after waiting just a little bit, I went ahead and started shoving the camera in both of their faces so they'd get used to it. And look how skittish these little boys are, but now they're comfortable with me touching their butt. You know, they really like it when they start to close their eyes a little bit, but you absolutely know you've won their heart and their trust when they lay down like this. And now they don't even care about the dang flash being in their eyes. Just look at this man wiggle his ears. Chad Uncle Ben has officially tamed a Cappy Blappies. And it only took a solid, uh, how long we've we been filming this, you guys? Probably about like three weeks. And you really know they trust you when you put your whole fist under their belly and just bounce them up and down. But I have found that they do like neck scratches the most. But this is phenomenal progress. We I'm did. I'm very happy for this progress. I'm very thankful. I've actually been praying for that. Tonight it finally happened. They finally just let let me pet them openly. That's it though. I'm gonna sleep in my own bed for tonight. Last night I slept out there with them and it was just a lot. And I got books to read. Oakley Doakley went ahead and moved the ostrich chicks out here. They have a little bit more space to run around, stretch their legs. Now they're finally getting a little bit of vitamin D as well. They're the same size as these guys, so they should be safe to run around with them now. Although they weren't a little bit ago. Only issue now is that these guys who love to peck, anything that they're not familiar with, will peck on them for a little tiny bit, but I don't think it's gonna be too bad. James Charles likes to peck pick on these little boys. If anything though, it's a tad enriching compared to what they're used to. And honestly, they'll get to run around, be adorable. They should be able to get some good shade in here all day, thanks to this thing here, but I'm gonna put another little tent right here. It was 110 degrees in this barn, according to my thing. And I just realized, you know what? No, anything is better than 110 degrees. So I moved them out here. Hey, don't be biting on my fingy. And now that everybody's in here together, I'm gonna go ahead, turn on this water. Hey, as you can see, they're already drinking with the other guy. Know where the water is, they know where the food is. James Charles needs to just stop being a dang boy. Pretty soon I am gonna move James Charles out of here. They're even eating a little tiny bit of natural grass. I've noticed these guys are starting to nibble on some of the things I wouldn't love them to eat. Just little tufts of grass and things like that. So I went ahead and separated them from these guys so I can really rake this stuff out. This is already digested and defecated grass from these other guys. And this shouldn't be the end of the world if they ate it, but I just don't want them to. It's really hard. Ostrich chicks have a super high mortality rate. That's why a lot of people raise them on sand. He was even just nibbling at this thing. Now he wasn't going to eat it if he didn't like it. But the sooner I get them on a little spot like this where they can learn okay, this is good grass, this is bad grass, the better. The other thing about this approach is that it allows them to hit their growth spurts with a little bit more safety. If these guys are in there when they hit their growth spurt, they may not be able to stretch their legs out, run around, get a little bit of vitamin D. Now these ostrich chicks have a lot more enrichment. They can walk around, they'll see different colors, they can see the sunlight. And it gives me another reason to come out here and sit with all these guys and let them get used to me. And they are getting used to me really, really well. Not sure what I'm gonna name this little boy yet. What's up guys? We're in downtown Austin. We're cleaning up the river a little bit today and do a little fishing and today we found this adorable little needle here i think this is probably for some kind of animal vaccination what do we do with it i'm just gonna go ahead and put this in my pocket these are just like the ones we used to find in the crack house back in the day i found these all over the floorboards of my house whenever i first got it should be a relatively safe place for now so i can take this back to my home lab and analyze it later <laughs> jackpot don't mind if i do ooh, what's it ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. me. oh brandon found a free stop sign don't mind if i do i'm gonna get it first raise that baby up let's take a look at it wow bro that's something you could keep here flip it it says slow whoa mind if i do Downtown Austin has some of the most beautiful creeks and a decent fishery right in the middle of the city. Hey, here's a nice little comforter Brandon Ooh, found. Ooh, Ooh, don't mind tonight. if I do. Bring Ooh. that back home, put it in the dryer. Very nice. Look at this beautiful man with his beautiful bag. Little fishing, little trash picking, cleaning up Austin a little bit. And look at those little sick loops. What's up, epic Fortnite pranksters? I'm here with 
the whipped. Uh, I hate myself. I hate myself. I hate myself. And it's very beautiful down here, but sadly, there's people naked bathing in there. And for those of you foreigners, it is illegal to be naked in public. Just advise that man and his small child to not walk down that road because there's a woman bathing a little bit downstream. But it's very beautiful here. We got a lot of natural limestone creeks. Could be amazing if we didn't have as many people living down here, shooting up needle and bathing. Ooh, someone missed their bedtime. I don't know why. Rio Grande cichlids are white right now. But take a look at that, you guys. They're beautiful. Don't mind if I do in this little cave. But look at that. Why is it white like that, you guys? You see it? Why is it white like that? so handsome. Well, as you can see, I caught this one all by myself. I caught this. Uh, this is me. I caught it. Uh, this is my rod. Just caught this all by myself. This is a Rio Grande cichlid. It certainly wasn't caught by this beautiful, handsome man here. We did. Yeah, pretty nice. Lots of tumors on his skin. There's definitely something in the water here that isn't good for him. We're at this little spot here downtown, as you can see, and there's an adorable little snapping turtle. Normally, you don't get to see snapping turtles basking. You almost never see snapping turtles just swimming at the top of the water like yeah. that. Bolt fishing. As you can see, I did it. I tamed the clappy blappies. And while I'm still not convinced that these are very intelligent animals, you do have to work very hard to gain their trust. Look at this man just vibing. Now, please enjoy this sped up video of Biggerton Ounserton eating a little piece of kale. And this footage was taken before our interns passed away. Look at this fat, fat I'm man. I'm feeding him a lot more Timothy and lettuce so he trims down. Coney 2012. <laughs> big Ounce taking over the sushi house. Now this big chubby boy is teaching this man how to eat some kale, as you can see. Gord is truly perplexed at the sheer magnitude of Big Ounce. I think we may have found the key to taming these guys. What's neat is that they eat the same stuff and they are relatively distant cousins. All right, good morning, all you sussy, imposter, amogus, Fortnite, RuneScape, James Chungus, Simpsters, Goosters, Gasters, and the baby Jojo Siwa fight enthusiasts. I got all the little baby rat tights in there. I'm going to be extending their kennels today, and I'm going to be making a wall over there temporarily until I can get some friends to help me make a better one. I'm using this stuff because it never goes bad, and it's an investment that lasts. I can always take down that wall later and rearrange. It's a nice 72 degree morning here in Texas, and I'm sick. Uncle Ben is just going to go ahead and lift this all up, drink a gallon of water and carry it over there by himself. I tell you, I'm sick. Look at this chicken just pecking over here. Okay, I got them all in here. These are all three species of rat tights, except for the cassowary. We got our rhea, we got our emus, and we got our ostrich baby. And they all eat basically the same food. And they grow at very similar rates, but not the same. I put this little gate in here so that I could extend this without them escaping, because the other day they did, and who knows what they ate. It was pretty cute, though. They all just kind of hung out in this little area. Okie doke, I just added about a 100 square feet for now i am gonna make it bigger eventually this is all over the good bermuda grass that's good and safe for them to eat it's also important to know that these guys have gizzards and they need to have a little bit of sand or grit in their gizzards so that they can grind up their food so if they do eat a little bit of dirt or a little bit of rocks that's okay but if they eat too much of it it can impact them now you're probably wondering uncle ben if these things are so fragile in captivity how on earth do they survive in the wild and the answer is they don't ostrich and rhea chicks particularly have a low survival rate in the wild emus though i think are different because they're just tanks raised a lot of emus now and i've never had issues with them eating the wrong things don't recommend anyone does this but you literally can raise emu chicks on wood chips i've done it before and they have never been impacted i know other people that raise rhea chicks on wood chips and they do okay with that but you certainly cannot raise ostrich chick on wood chips. This is how Rias will eat. They'll pick out little tiny bits with their mouths. Just tiny, tiny little bits. Emus are a lot more curious and they like to poke and peck at things. And ostrich chicks are just all around a lot more dumb. They seem to have a lot less of a grip of what's going on. Okay, we just got the rest of the fencing. Now we're not gonna be getting any more of that. Yesterday, Poggers got away and just ran to the groomer down the street. What's great is that the groomers took care of him and found the microchip and called me up. What isn't great is that they fed him a lot of junk food. So now he's gonna run off and just go right back. He's slept inside my living room and this morning i let him out and he's just already gone literally let him outside like two hours ago and i just can't find him now but the pools evaporated pretty well the pigs seem to escape pretty well too good morning queeb i'm just gonna go ahead and guide these pigs back over to where they're supposed to be good morning loretta hello queeb praise god the fencing guy came by and dropped off pogger Apparently, he was just two lots down just sitting in their yard pogger come on let's go I, I oughta. whoa is that the baby uh uh, haha, hey guys, it's me, Urban Rescue Ranch. Take a look at this store we got here. We got Big Boy, all the plushies you guys love. We got 
Uh, we got Capybara shirts. We got Capybara swim trunks. Look at this. Beautiful. Unisex tees. We also got Capybara. What are these? Socks? We also got a baseball cap for the kids. Cheap, cheap, cheap prices. Now you're probably thinking, does he have home goods? Well, we do. Get this for your we mom. We even got a little pillowcase. And all the proceeds go straight to the ranch. You're getting a nice sprinkler system. All kinds of good grass. And if the link in the description doesn't work, it's because too many of you people are clicking on it. Just wait and come back later tonight. But I love you guys. I appreciate you. Thanks for supporting us. And we'll see you in the next video. Oh! <laughs> I'm still sick.